Ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. The whole purpose for doing fire mitigation on the front range is really twofold. Down here in the lower montane ecosystem, we actually accomplish two things. We get both a lot of um, fuels reduction, fire prevention for the homes that are here, but we also restore this forest back to a more natural tree density. Um, and a very long story short is that starting in about 1860 during European settlement, there was a lot of logging, a lot of mining, we cut down most of the forest, um, and then what happened was we allowed the entire forest to regrow in the presence of, of uh, uh, cattle grazing predominantly. And what that meant is that we now, where we used to historically have 30 to 60 trees per acre, we now have sometimes as much as 300 to 600 trees per acre. And what that does is it makes for terrible fire conditions and also for a very unnatural forest. That means uh, native birds won't nest, it makes bad habitat for mountain lions and deer. And so fire mitigation hopefully does two things simultaneously. It reduces the hazards, the fire hazards for the folks who live here in Four Mile. Um, and then it also improves the forest health. Are we going to be able to clear though? Watch your heels there, Shanti. What we're doing right now is we're actually extracting logs from a joint project between Sugarloaf Fire Department and the Four Mile Fire Department. Um, and all of these logs are going to get utilized um, in a home building project for a couple that just lost their home in the Four Mile Canyon Fire. The other project that we're currently involved in is over on in the Sugarloaf community um, and it's in the Tall Timbers neighborhood and it's a really really exciting project because it shows how a small amount of money in very precise um, uh, cutting in a very precise area can have an enormous amount of benefit in terms of the reducing the fire risk for our community. So over on Tall Timbers and Sugarloaf, what we've done is we've got a, a gulch or a gully which we know has um, from the fire behaving modeling, the potential for really extreme fire behavior. And this gulch sits below about 25 homes, um, all of whom potentially could be, could be compromised by a wildfire. So what we've been able to do is get funding, again, through the State Forest Service and through private landowners paying on their own land to come in, cut these five acres in this really problematic gulch um, and get an awful lot of, of benefit. The goal behind fire mitigation is if there's a fire, what we wanna what we wanna do is prevent fire getting up into the crown of the trees, up into the canopy of the trees. So by coming through, removing sometimes as many as 50 or 60 percent of the trees in a given area. And again, we might have 600 trees per acre. So if we're taking out 50%, we're still leaving an awful lot of trees. But we try and get 10 to 15 foot spacing between the trees so that if, if we have a fire, that fire stays on the surface. And a surface fire, the fire department can engage and fight. A crown fire, we have to retreat and just watch the fire burn. There are a lot of challenges that we face right now with fire mitigation. The first is that um, in the current economic climate, it's expensive. You know, good fire mitigation can cost anywhere from $2,500 to $4,000 an acre. Um, another huge problem is that there is no outlet for the biomass. Um, uh, this is a unique project in the sense that we are getting trees utilized, but generally there's no way to produce a product to offset the cost of the service that we um, provide to the homeowner. Um, and then recently, we also have a, another challenge, which is people are very concerned about mountain pine beetles. And there's a belief that forestry activities can actually attract the mountain pine beetle. Um, and although that does happen on occasion, I think there's some very good science out there that says it's far more important to do fire mitigation and risk the fact that you may attract some beetles um, than not do the mitigation.